The holy city of Hebron is my destination today. It's been a while since I last visited the city of our forefathers and mothers. Hebron resident David Wilder took me to see some of the restorations which Jews have made to this holy city since their return to Hebron following the Six-Day War. We're now in the Avram Avinu Synagogue. This synagogue was built in 1540 by Jews who had been exiled from Spain, went to Turkey, and came and lived here in Hebron. And this was used for almost 450 years before it was destroyed in 1929 following the riots that were in Hebron. When we came back here, there was nothing here. There was a sheep sty, there was a public bathroom, there was a dump. It was, there was nothing less left that was reminiscent of a synagogue. And today you can see it's been rebuilt, it's beautiful. We have people that study here every day, people, people are able to pray here every day. On Shabbos it's full. It's a wonderful feeling to be able to, to pray in such a synagogue. Please, Rav Shalom, open up the curtain for the Holy Ark. This synagogue was originally built by Jews of Spanish descent. So this is a Sephardi synagogue, and therefore the Torah scrolls don't lie down. They are in encasements, as you see here. When the synagogue was destroyed, there were seven Torah scrolls here. They were taken to Jerusalem. Three of them were brought back when we returned here. I'd like to show you. These are Torah scrolls that are hundreds of years old. This is a kosher Torah scroll. We take this out and read from this here, sometimes on Shabbos, sometimes on, uh, on Mondays and on Thursdays. Uh, you can see that the letters of the scroll are so black it looks like they were written yesterday because the parchment is very, very fine, special parchment. It's very important to understand that the renewal of the Jewish community in Hebron isn't just a physical return, it's a spiritual return. And this is part of the spiritual pillar of our being in Hebron, these Torah scrolls which we brought back home. Not Torah scrolls that we brought here from a foreign city, they're back home in the city of Hebron in the Avon of Inner Synagogue. From the Avraham Avinu Synagogue, David took me to Hebron's restored Jewish quarter, populated by brave Jews, who today live under the threat of Arab terrorists who would love to remove the Jews from this ancient Jewish city. Yet, still today, children play and grow up in one of the oldest Jewish communities here in Israel. You know, Rav Shalom was standing in a neighborhood that's <coughs> that was initiated in 1540. There had been Jews who were exiled from Spain in 1492. They made their way to Turkey. And in 1540, a group of them, led by a rabbi named Malki al Ashkenazi, came to live here. They purchased this land, and they started a Jewish quarter, which existed until 1929. And when we came back here, in 1967, there was nothing left. It had been totally destroyed. There were Jews that had lived here in 29 who came back looking for the old Jewish quarter, and they couldn't find it. They asked the Arabs, where is the Jewish quarter? Because it was non-existent. And today, we've rebuilt this neighborhood anew, on top of the ruins of the old neighborhood. Why don't we go see one of the other neighborhoods? Excellent. We're standing in front of where I live today. This is called Beit Hadassah, uh, the Hadassah House. The original building was built in 1893. It's the downstairs floor. This is a medical clinic for anybody that needed any medical care in Hebron, whether they were Jewish or Arab. Anybody who needed it could come here. If they didn't have money to pay for it, they received it for free. The second floor was built in 1909. Uh, it was added on because this was so, so widely used, they didn't have room. The building was used until 1929 when there were Arab riots all over Israel. In August of that summer, uh, the worst of those riots were in Hebron. 67 Jews were massacred here, another 70 were wounded, and the rest of the community was exiled. They were, they were evicted by the British, and that was basically the end of a major Jewish community in Hebron until we came back during the Six-Day War in 1967. We came back here specifically in 1979 and after Pesach, a group of 10 women and 40 children moved into this building. Women and children lived here, uh, isolated for almost a year. Uh, in the spring of 1980, unfortunately, outside there was a terrorist attack. Six men were killed. Uh, and a 
few days after that, the Israeli government, meeting in a special session, finally decided to uh, issue the permits for the renewal of a Jewish community in Hebron. Today, this building has been totally renovated, two floors were added onto it. Downstairs, we have a museum, there's a small shul here, and, uh, and the rest of the building is residential. Uh, and uh, I think there are 11 families that live here today. In the tradition of our foremothers, the women of Hebron seem to have a special strength, which until today continues to inspire the Jewish people. We're standing right in front of Beit Schneerson, the Schneerson house. The woman who lived here, her name was Menucha Rachel Schneerson Sloney. She was the granddaughter of the author of the Tanya, the founder of the Chabad Lubavitch movement. She was the daughter of the Mittler Rebbe, who was the second Rebbe of Chabad. I was told about her that when she was a little girl, she wanted to come live in the land of Israel. And her father said it was too dangerous. And not long after that, she became sick. And the doctor said the only thing left to do was to pray. They had nothing, nothing to help her. So her father came and whispered in her ears that if she recovered, she could come live in the land of Israel. And she recovered. And she came to live in Hebron. And uh, she was a righteous woman. She gave blessings to people, to, to, to brides before the weddings. She was a leader in the community. And she was so highly respected that we were told that after her husband had died and her father's successor, the Tzemach Tzedek's wife had died, he wrote to her asking her to come back to Eastern Europe and marry him. And she wrote back saying, I'm a shaliach in Hebron. This is where I live and I'm going to stay here. If you want to marry me, you come here. Needless to say, uh, they didn't get married. She's buried here in the ancient Jewish cemetery. One of the truly righteous people that had the privilege to live in the holy city of Hebron.